I'm gonna share with you everything I did when I went to Cologne, Germany this year. Okay, I'm finding it really difficult to talk to a camera because it's been a long time and I don't really want to spend time on excuses. So this video is all about what I did in Cologne, Germany and why I think, even though it's not the first destination in Germany that comes to mind, you might really enjoy going there. So I have my laptop in front of me right now. So I'm gonna kind of walk you through a little bit. We stayed at the Hyatt Regency Cologne, which is just across the Rhine River from the Cologne Cathedral. We loved it, we had a king bed, the best, the view is amazing. Amazing. Um, we got there as the sun was going down and FYI I had just driven on the Autobahn before this which basically just means I drove on the German highway and I went like hundred miles an hour and it was super fun thrilling I loved it I'm so glad we rented a car because that was like kind of a bucket list item for me to drive on the Autobahn and it did not disappoint so when we were checking in I told them it was my husband's birthday and as soon as we checked into our hotel room maybe like ten minutes later we had a knock on our door and um, they delivered us an entire bottle of champagne. And then we went to Fru. Thank you. Yummy. This place is a brow house. It's like a beer hall. Cologne is known for Kolsch beer. I feel like the way you pronounce it is like Kolsch. So there's essentially one type of beer that you're gonna be drinking at this beer hall, and that is Kolsch. And they will keep bringing you glass after glass after glass until you put a coaster on top of your glass. And the way that they keep track of how many you've had is they use a pen and mark tally marks on your coaster. So by the time you're done eating, they count up the tally marks and that's how much beer they're charging you for which is a great system <laughs> if you like beer. We also wanted to eat a lot of food. This trip was a lot about food. So we got the blood sausage, this rye roll thing. It's a very common beer hall food that has raw pork and chopped onions on top, which might sound gross to some people. Totally sounded gross to me at first. Actually extremely delicious. I was so surprised. Every table we learned over time has mustard on the table, which is so German. We we also got this thing, I'm gonna put it on the screen right now, but it's basically a pork knuckle and it's served with sauerkraut and mashed potatoes. So that's this huge thing on a plate right here. We really liked fruit and we totally went back. So the next day was a little bit of solo exploration. Um, my husband and I travel kind of different, so it's not uncommon for him to be like, I'm on vacation and I'm gonna take like an hour to rest in my hotel. And I'm like, I'm on vacation, so I'm gonna go run around the entire city and that's just how we do it but I remember that afternoon for lunch I had currywurst and it was pretty good it was very tomatoey basically tastes like curry with sausage which is essentially what it is I don't know not my favorite German dish but to be honest with you I liked German food a lot more than I thought I would actually Belgian food was the one that like messed my stomach up German food loved it so Yesterday, we went to Ghent, we went to a castle, and then we drove to Cologne in Germany. So that's where I am, in Cologne. Um, behind me is the cathedral. The I think in German it's Cologne Damm. I don't know, I'm probably wrong. This is the bridge to get there. It's like pedestrian bridges, all these like locks along here where people, it's like the love lock thing, you know, where people like seal their love on a bridge or whatever. Eric's actually hanging out in the hotel. We've been go, go, go this whole trip, so I'm like, running on kind of empty but I'm just I'm the kind I just am pushing through <laughs> it's probably a bad idea I'm gonna do a little bit of solo exploring around Cologne um, we're gonna go in the cathedral later we want to go up on that tower to get a good view I want to check out the original perfume like the Eau de Cologne I don't know I'm saying everything wrong let's go P.S. this is the Rhine so in case you didn't catch that, I was just saying that this bridge goes over the Rhine River. It connected the place where our hotel was to like the side that has the Cologne Cathedral and all the stuff basically. And it's one of those bridges that's like a love lock bridge, which Eric and I totally did. But I think maybe we made it into bad luck for ourselves because I ended up taking the keys as souvenir and I heard that you're supposed to throw them in the river, but we did not throw them in the river. Only time will tell. Something I find really interesting about Cologne is it doesn't really have like the old city that Bruges or Ghent had. And it's because of World War II. They say the city was kind of almost flattened um, during World War II because of bombings. This cathedral 
Do you see how big this is? It's impossible to convey to you guys how big this is. This cathedral survived for the most part. It was damaged, but it survived. So this cathedral has quite the history. Okay, I'm gonna keep walking and try to give you an idea of how big this is. It is huge. It's apparently 500 steps up and um, it's the tallest Gothic cathedral in the world. Nuts. It's an average of 20,000 visitors every day. Okay, do you see? There's no way to convey this. <laughs> I said that I was gonna wait for Eric to go to the cathedral. I couldn't wait, I went by myself. This cathedral is truly incredible, but looking at this video is like nothing compared to the memory that I like feel of being in the cathedral. You just feel like you're somewhere sacred, like it's a piece of history and you feel really like small. You know, like it's one of those moments where you're like, humans built this. Okay, you know how perfume is really called like Eau de Cologne? It's kinda came from Cologne. I'm not really sure exactly where that came about, but I was trying to figure out which one came first, the 4711 or the Farina. Apparently Farina came first, but they both kind of claim to be the original. So I just smelled them both. And shocker, I <laughs> I don't like either of them. I'm just not a perfume lady. I might get a small bottle of the Farina just to take home in case like it's a good gift. I don't know. We're kind of just collecting gifts as we go and we'll figure it out later. But right now, I'm headed back across the bridge to go ride an elevator up a cool tower for a good view. And then I'm gonna go back to the cathedral there and uh, then some shopping and some eating. Basically this building is called the Cologne Triangle. It's a place to go to get a panoramic view of the city, like literally 360 degree view. So you do pay a fee. I'll look up how much it is and put it on the screen now. Um, you take this elevator like really high up and then you're on this like rooftop deck. Definitely worth it if you just wanna get perspective of like how big Cologne is. It actually is a pretty big city. Cologne is the fourth most populous city in Germany with slightly over one million inhabitants. It's the largest city on the Rhine River. The city was actually founded and established in the first century AD. This is from 50 AD. Wait, so this is, oh my God. And unfortunately it was, as I said earlier, one of the most heavily bombed cities in Germany during World War II. The bombing was actually so bad that it reduced the population by 95%, mostly because people needed to evacuate and it destroyed almost the entire city. That's why Cologne doesn't have a ton of that like old historic Germany look, like people do the romantic road trip and they go and see these old cute German towns with all this history. And Cologne has that history, it just doesn't have a whole lot of historic buildings to show for it. Um, because so many of them were destroyed in World War II. And I think that might be why Cologne is not a super popular tourist destination. We had an unexplicable love for Cologne by the time we left. It's something about the like the Brauhaus culture and like the resilience of a city, I think. I think those are two things that 
really played into it. It feels like a welcoming city. We actually ended up on Eric's birthday drinking very late into the night at an Irish pub of all places. And we ended up having long conversations with Germans, with um, an Austrian guy. He bought us shots, which I was like, <laughs> Okay, you're crazy and awesome. We also met Americans there. It's like, can't get away from them. <laughs> I can't explain it, but there's something about Cologne that feels like good. There's a shopping like street in Cologne that's full of like really commercialized shops. And actually you'll see a lot of the crowds there. So people will come, they'll see the cathedral and they'll go shopping. And I avoided that shopping street and I fell in love with Cologne for some reason and I think it just goes to show that there's something about the vibe of the city that just feels unique. I feel like Anthony Bourdain said something similar on Parts Unknown. Dusseldorf is right next door and it almost like looks prettier but there's something about Cologne. I also cannot end this video without mentioning the white asparagus. So yes, we got to try Wiener Schnitzel, but oh my God, the white asparagus stole the show. I don't know how to describe how good it is, but it is so good. It has this like yummy sweet flavor to it and like a great texture and it's cooked perfectly and they like smothered it in hollandaise and it's only really like available that's that special time of year like this region is known for the white asparagus and but yeah this was the best meal we ate in germany and eric still talks about this meal today i need my sparkle so anyways i hope you love cologne as much as we did and let me know if you are able to articulate why you love cologne because i seem to be incapable of it and on that i will exit uh this video with the most incredible street music we saw on our trip and i think this music is Eastern European. I don't really think it's like German. Correct me if I'm wrong, but loved this music. Regret not buying a CD. I hope you enjoyed this video. The next one will be finishing up Europe vlogs. It'll be Dusseldorf and the last days in Amsterdam combined. After that, it's going to be some New York content. And then after that, I think I'm going to try to dive into why this has been like the hardest summer ever and why I've kind of taken a break from sharing my personal life on the internet. Um, but I'm feeling the urge to get back into that. Not daily vlogging though. Please don't ask me to daily vlog. It's way too much. I have a full-time job, okay? Um, but I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and um, comment below if you've ever been to Cologne or where you think I should go next in Germany because we're definitely gonna go back to Germany. Okay, bye.